We started off by just saying who you are and what you do. Yep. Um, firm believer in Jesus Christ. Currently struggling with codependency and anger. My name is Mike Burnett out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Uh, what I do professionally or what I do for the ministry? For the ministry. For the ministry. I'm the ministry leader for Summer Recovery in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Yep. And so you were a part of a group launch. Yeah, we launched ours, our Summer Recovery about seven years ago. Uh, the first thing we did was that we went to Chicago about maybe eight years ago. And then we got all the information. We got the kits, you know, to, to, to get an idea. Um, we then gave our, our pastors the, the pastor's kit. I think that's, that's vital to get your pastors on board. There is a pastor's kit. You give it to them. They understand what CR is all about and the different programs they offer, such as a landing celebration place, you know, step study. They get it. Once they understand that kit, because uh, you're going to need their full support 100%. Um, my, my thought process is if you don't have your, your pastor's full support for the, for the ministry, uh, it's going to be really, really tough. Um, so after that, you know, you work with your pastor to find out, you know, you're good to go, green light. You come up with a day that we're going to actually start your celebrate recovery. Um, ours is on a Thursday night. It used to be on a Sunday. I'm trying to get it back to a Sunday. So um, but just find out what's best for your community. Uh, I think you said you're in Oakland, Oaktown. So basically what works for Oakland, you know, it was it be a Friday night and make it a Friday night family thing or could it be just a Sunday after after main service is over, you can then roll into, you know, celebrate recovery. As long as the pastor's supporting it, he can make sure everyone's after after main service stay there and, and, and attend celebrate recovery. So the so the attendees from, from the main service can roll right into celebrate recovery. Right. So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, also if your church has different amenities such as, you know, child care well, maybe you can have child care until you launch with the landing or celebration place, right? So now you got child care. Um, who's bringing food? All those different things. So, but I will say this. Summer Recovery is a people-oriented uh, uh, ministry. You need a lot of people to run this ministry. And that's probably the most realist advice I can give you besides your pastor being 120% on board with you. 100%, 120% on board. If, if they're just 80%, I say wait, let the Lord work on them until... They're fully on board because you're going to need them to, to market and to give uh, information, to uh, give you support. You're going to need that. Without that, I say just wait until you have that. Uh, but once you have that, if you found a date you want to, you know, you need about maybe 30, maybe 60 days of marketing to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, a good place to market would be to uh, halfway homes, men halfway homes, women halfway homes. Because a lot of those people, you know, they need uh, meetings like this. We're court orders, we have to sign off on. So those immediate, they need uh, sub recovery or, or a ministry like this. So, but yeah, you're gonna need, uh, I say at least three people to uh, right away uh, help you support you in the ministry. Uh, and then you're gonna need at least two guys and two ladies to form breakout groups, right? So you need two guys, you can run it with another gentleman that you trust. So you open share groups, you can have, you know, a general life group for for men, and then you have another one for the ladies, two ladies running that, a leader and co-leader, and there you go. So I would say you need at least, at least, I would say, you know, three guys and, and two ladies to run a, a, a CR right off the bat. You have that, you're up and running. Okay, okay. What do you have to say to the concern about the co-ed nature of what you just said? Like well, says, oh, co-ed is a red flag. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, runs the risk of potential relapse for sexual behavior or something along those lines. What would you have to say in response to that? Right, right. Well, I mean, it is a, a small concern uh, in, in open share, which is or, or a large group. In large group, you know, we're all together. Uh, I haven't had in seven years a situation where someone said, hey, you know, I'm having an issue. Um, but then when you get into your open share, that's where men go with men and women go with women. And embedded in the program is a lot of structure to make sure that men go to men, women go to women. For example, in chip night, men get chips from men, women get chips from women. Uh, so there's a lot of different things, like in step study, there's a women's group, there's a men's group. So uh, if you just follow the guidelines of the program, it'll tell you where you need to separate the sexes to make sure that there's security. Um, you should not have a problem with that. Uh, the, like I said, the only time they're together is in, is in large group where they're actually in worship together, you know, the lesson or testimonies together. 
uh, chip night together. You know, they are they would be eating together if you do have some type of uh, eating uh, beforehand. Um, but that's about it. So far, I haven't had anyone with that type of challenge. Okay, and uh, lastly, what is your message to a pastor who's reluctant, like you said, the pastor's 120% on board launch. Yeah. If they're 80%, wait, yeah. well, what would be your uh, message or your response to those pastors that are 80%? Yeah, I always say that you need to really, really understand what CR is about. A lot of misconceptions is what many pastors may have, that it's only for the alcoholics or for the people with, with drug addictions. It's not for that. It's not just for that. It's people with just normal, average, everyday hurts, hangups and habits like anger or fear or codependency or uh, depression. Um, this is real, just average, everyday stuff, you know, pride. Uh, that's what Celebrate Recovery deals with. My name is Ann Chapman and we are at the CR Summit in at Saddleback Church because I don't know what city we're in. Lake Forest. Thank you, Lake Forest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you wrote two books, right? Yes, two children's books. Uh, what are the names of the books? Uh, Ipamanandas, God's Friend, mm -hmm. and Yes, Jesus. Okay, nice. And one of them is a children's book? Or? Yes. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so let's jump into the main question. What would you have to say to a church that has a reluctancy to launch a CR group? I would say that a church is, it is like a hospital for people and who need healing and recovery and salvation. And CR is one way that could help those hurting people. You can't, you know, not to ignore them, but to know that they need help. And this is one program that will do it, following Christ's principles. Right, right. Um, does this conflict with the idea that people need to be delivered? Is recovery and deliverance? Um, well, if, if by deliverance you mean, you know, that God's just going to go zap and you're done, then... It's not in conflict with that because I believe God can do that, but the majority of people it's going to be a process. And so Celebrate Recovery gives you the tools to do that process. Right. So would it fall under the umbrella of uh, discipleship? What happens in the rooms? Uh, well, I think discipleship is more of guiding people, but what happens in the rooms is you're basically just sharing and we're not there to fix anybody. Right. We're there just to listen and it lets people know they're not alone. What's up, man? Sober Gang TV. <laughs> we have a, a fellow right here that has agreed to interview. Go ahead and tell him your name and where All you're right. from. My name's Josh. I'm a faithful believer in Jesus. Came to Sober Recovery for alcohol, safer life issues, and I'm from uh, Niceville, Florida. Oh, you came all the way from Nashville? Niceville, Florida. Niceville? Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. came from Niceville. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. So can you tell me how Celebrate Recovery has impacted your life? Yeah, it's totally changed my life, man. Um, man, growing up, I went through a lot, and I just didn't have hope. I uh, didn't understand what love was. I didn't understand who God was and didn't think that, like, the things the Bible talked about with Jesus and how uh, his love was, was real. And it wasn't until I came to Celebrate Recovery and I uh, got to actually see God's love at work through testimonies, through discipleship with other men and growing and seeing how God worked in their lives that I started to have hope in my own and felt that God could change me from within and like just gave me hope for the future, so. Right, okay. Um... What do you have to say about the process of Celebrate Recovery? Uh, has it been healthy for you? Have you ever felt like it was a waste of time? Does it always feel productive? No. But, you know, you can be honest. Yeah. So I initially came um, out of necessity, um, and I didn't want to go when I first came to Celebrate Recovery. I thought it was going to be like every other church I'd been to, and I thought um, I'd get rejected for being honest about my struggles and things I'd been through. But... Uh, Man, it's just <laughs> like working the steps and working with other people and just uh, hearing what they've been through, man. It's uh, it's just been life changing. It's it's been awesome. Like it's changed my heart. It's made me desire God and a relationship with Him, and made me want to share a lot. Like Celebrate Recovery's given me with other people, so that they can have the same thing that I've found. Right, right. 
So, um, is it a 12-step program? A lot of people don't even, literally yeah. don't even know what it is. Is it a 12-step program? Do you have a sponsor? Is it, you know? So, it is a 12-step program, um, but it's Christ-centered. Um, it's not just for alcohol or drugs. It's for anything in life that you're going through, whether that's, you know, trauma, stress, anger. It's anything, in the, anything that takes you away from God. It's just to help recover and help you get a relationship with God. Um, you work the 12 steps through a step study. Um, you go through an 8 to 10 month program with a bunch of other men where you just get open and honest with each other about your life, what you've been through. And then as you open up and learn more about yourself and your life, then you work with a sponsor. And that sponsor ends up walking you through the steps and like kind of showing you in a discipleship way like how how to grow in your relationship with God and how to use the steps to grow closer to Him and your knowledge of Him, so. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. Um, what would you have to say about a church that's considering starting a CR group but hasn't yet? What would you uh, say to the staff or board or, you know? I, I'd say it's a great outreach. Like, um, I know a lot of people that just didn't understand church, didn't understand God, and like, didn't understand the love He has. But through the program, um, people can come, whatever they're going through in life, and they can find acceptance, and they can learn, like, the love that Jesus has, and they can see it reflected in other people that have been through uh, similar struggles that they're going through. And uh, I've just seen so many lives changed in it that it's awesome. Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Chris. Uh, I am with Celebrate Recovery, specifically Cultural Communities. Uh, and at Cultural Communities, we seek to bring, you know, people... We're just reaching out to people of color, you know, not to make it, you know, any division or anything like that, but we just want to make sure that, you know, people of color know that, you know, this ministry is for them too, if they want it. You know, if you want to heal from your hurts, ha habits, or hangups, then this ministry is for you. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter, like, who might be the majority in this, in this ministry. It's for everybody. And so my specific role with cultural communities is I'm the director over uh, CR Inside, and so what we're doing is we're working on bringing more Celebrate Recovery programs to prisons, right, throughout the nation because, you know, people inside want to heal too. And we want to make it available, you know, to anybody and everybody that wants to heal from their hurts, hangups, and habits. That's what's up. So how long has cultural communities been a thing in CR? Uh, I, think it, I think it's been underway for about five years now, somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, I myself have been on for about, I think, two Okay. coming up on two so yeah we're, we're growing you know more people are, are stepping into leadership and we continuing to to build it out and, and grow it yeah how has um how have cultural communities reacted to the cultural communities ministry are people surprised uh yeah yeah I mean, are you are you yeah so um yeah you know from what i hear like i haven't been like in the conversations per particular but I hear that you know it's a, it's some mixed reactions some people some people feel like it's unnecessary why do we need it why do we need cultural communities but you know fortunately we have a, a, a director right Cheryl Luke who really believes in what we're doing and you know is willing to stand behind our mission right to bring you know those that maybe don't feel welcome here in right invite them in and let them know no you're welcome here this is for you too so it's, it's been it's been mixed reaction it's been mixed reaction but uh, you know despite that i mean it's it's it's, it's 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 caused some conversations that you know maybe have been a little bit uncomfortable you know it's always hard to talk about you know our differences but but uh you know here we are still five years later and we're growing so you know we're not going anywhere <laughs> so what is your reaction to this statement? There are zero CR meetings in the city of Oakland, California. Wow. Uh, my reaction to that, that statement is uh, we got to fix that. We got to fix that. We got to fix that ASAP. Um, yeah, we got to do something about that because, you know, I'm sure there's some people over there in Oakland that, that want this too. And we want to make it available. I didn't know that. That's good to know, you know. So I'm going to definitely, uh, you know, do some research and see, you know, what we can do about that, solving that problem. Definitely. And then um, two things. 
two more things. I thought I just said that, but uh, what would you have to say to a church that's considering launching a CR group, but just hasn't yet? Yeah, man. Um, you know, there's church and then there's CR, right? CR is like a whole nother level, right? Like in CR, you know, you can be real. You can be really real about whatever it is you're going through. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to look at you any type of way, different, you know. You're welcome. Bring your hurts. Bring your troubles. Bring your pains, whatever it is. You know, and, and I don't know if that's always the case at church, you know. We show up, we show up with our, our Sunday best on. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think we might be presenting this, this idea of ourselves that, you know, we, we don't have issues, you know. But... At CR, you don't have to do that. You can just come in and talk about whatever it is. It doesn't, ha- it doesn't have to be drug addiction. It doesn't have to be alcohol, right? A good chunk of people that come to CR don't struggle with those things. It could be anything. It could be anger, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, you know, any, literally anything you can work this program for. So I highly recommend, you know, launching a CR because, uh, you know, people want and need this. And why not make it available? Okay, what is, lastly, what is your reaction to the idea that co-ed is a problem or um, could trigger people or is a good reason not to do CR because it's co-ed? Yeah, good question. So I just want to clear up that. uh, So we do what's uh, what's called open share. And when we do open share, those are gender and issue specific. So those are not actually co-ed. Those are when you're... When you're in group, in a circle, you know, sharing with one another, maybe about the week, getting current on what's going on in your life, or sometimes we'll have a focus question that people can, uh, people can answer. So those groups are not co-ed, but we do have a large group where there's a teaching or a testimony, right? It's kind of like in church. We like to say we're shoulder to shoulder. In, um, in, in a large group, we're, we're shoulder to shoulder. But then when you go to open share, we're heart to heart. Then when you do a step, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Uh, 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 large group is shoulder to shoulder. Um, um, open share is face to face. And then if you get a sponsor work the steps, that's heart to heart. Mm. Right. And so, yeah, those groups are not are not correct. But the large group is. And, you know, it's really not people sharing anything about themselves. It's just we're sitting and listening to a teaching, you know, a recovery-related uh, uh, teaching or a testimony. Just get started, Sober Gang TV. How you doing? Um, tell us about Cultural Community CR and also what we're doing here. Where are we at? Awesome. Well, we're so excited. We are at the 2023 Summit this year. We're right outside of the building uh, where there's amazing worship and ministry going on. The Cultural Communities is just doing the heart of Jesus. We are trying to fulfill the Great Commission. Our goal is to share recovery and recovery process, celebrate recovery with communities of color who may be resistant or even afraid of traditional therapy, of 12-step programs. We really want to reach those who may not even be church, but want to begin the process of healing. So that's what we do. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm telling everyone this because it's a fact. But did you know that Oakland, California has zero CR meetings? No, I did not know that. That's not awesome. <laughs> what, would you, what would your message be to those that are, you know, in ministry, focusing on church, but have yet to let a CR launch at their, uh, church? their church? I would say to them, the whole point of Celebrate Recovery is to do something that Jesus asked us to do in the Great Commission, to go ye therefore and make disciples. CR is the best discipleship program I've ever seen. That's not a soundbite. That's what I actually believe. And the reason I say that is because the curriculum is based on the Beatitudes. It's actually following the process that I believe Jesus would have us follow to help make people more like him. And that's the focus. So I really believe in healing, health, and recovery. And if you're not having a Celebrate Recovery in your church, you're missing out on having even more powerful people with breakthroughs, bringing more people in. Yeah. Have you seen anyone go from CR to a traditional role in the church as well? Or is any of that type of stuff happening? You know, what's interesting, we actually talked to a lady today who started off at CR and actually received Jesus Christ through that process. So 
for some people who are unchurched or who are even unfamiliar with Jesus and the recovery and a Christian based recovery process, CR can be a great way, way to bring them into um, into the heart of Christ, but also into ministry. So, yeah, that happens often. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. And uh, you got an Instagram? Wanna... I do. It's super boring. You can follow my dog at Love Joy. That's it on Instagram. L U B J O Y E. It's pictures of me and my dog. You'll love it or not. It's okay. All right, cool. We'll <laughs> tag you. Thank you so much. All right, Over thank you. TV. Right. So, um, cultural communities CR is launching its Chinese ministry that speaks in Mandarin and Cantonese and has meetings on Zoom. Can you talk? tell me a little bit about that and tell me what's to come this year and next year uh, about the ministry? Sure. Uh, so we actually have been in operation for 20 years. This is our 20th year of running CR program in Chinese. And uh, I mean, this is our founder, Christina. She started the ministry 20 years ago. So uh, I joined, uh, I, I joined, I started my recovery about 10 years ago and joined ministry about six, seven years ago. And so this year, a uh, few big things that will continue to operate. Uh, we'll offer 12 step study online via Zoom. And uh, also, big things is we're going to launch our online large group meetings and open share. Uh, that's very exciting so that people can join no matter where you are as long as you can get to your computer you have the internet access you can get recovery right. okay. and can you tell the, the people about the launch your experience just starting the uh the meetings and you can say it in mandarin and just give a history breakdown okay um i'm christina <laughs> <笑>我是Christina 那目前我们有二十年之久那现在呢很开心的呢就是我们已经整合到那个马安峰教会 <咳>我叫李维超 到今年2003年已经超过11年 跟自己的关系都变得良好 男生组和女生组
Sober Gang TV here with a the director of yes. CR Inside, national director of CR Inside. For those that don't know, what is CR Inside? So first of all, the national director position for CR Inside means this. If you want to go to prison, I can help you get there. And so what CR Inside Ministry is about is once someone has completed their own recovery process, now we want to give back because we keep what we have by giving it away. And so CR Inside helps people take uh, Celebrate Recovery into jails and prisons. And so we have about 700 jails and prisons throughout the country right now doing Celebrate Recovery inside on the other side of the fences. And uh, our ministry takes CR to one side of the fences and they begin the process of recovery there. And then um, before they get out, they write the local Celebrate Recovery so that when they get out, they have a place to land. Uh, they know the day, the time, and the contact of the meeting in their area, so they know where to go and get some help after they get out. So the CR Inside Ministry also helps uh, with the prisoners' families. Uh, we encourage Celebrate Recoveries throughout the country to do the Angel Tree Ministry, which brings Christmas gifts to the children who have a mom or dad in prison. And then uh, we seek to get those families connected so they can get their own healing and recovery. And then when their family member gets out of prison, uh, they can then all as a family attend their local Celebrate Recovery. So that's a snapshot of how CR Inside works. Wow, so how are the jails responding to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the use of CR instead of traditional mm -hmm. AA or NA or, you know? How are mm -hmm. they, how are, you, are you hearing back from the wardens or the, you know, We have, we have uh, wardens throughout the country that have responded well, saying that they want our program into their jails or prisons because it has been shown to reduce the level of uh, inmate violence and has uh, those that are attending Celebrate Recovery have less behavior problems. So it's a win-win. The inmates get the needed recovery they need and the, uh, the administration at the prisons have a population of prisoners that are doing the right thing and they're working on their own recovery. So I actually, my first contact with Celebrate Recovery Inside is when I was a prisoner in California serving a double life sentence. And uh, at that time, a group um, of about 20 of us were trained to be group leaders in our prison. And then it expanded from us to about 200 inmates doing Celebrate Recovery together. And uh, the administration allowed us to all live together in, uh, in one building like a therapeutic community. Uh, using Celebrate Recovery and the results of that are now documented that the number of behavior problems and disciplinary write-ups um, it de-escalated so quickly at that prison that the warden was shocked and uh, he called out to Saddleback Church and Celebrate Recovery and the warden said what have you done to my prison because everybody is behaving differently and it was so noticeable uh, for those living in that building that the behavior problems were so low that that warden is now on video. You can see him on YouTube. His name is uh, Warden Kramer. You can uh, look up uh, Warden Kramer on YouTube and see our inside and see the testimony of Celebrate Recovery at that prison. Okay, and how does somebody get involved with CR Inside in their local area? So um, that's our ministry, is to help the local uh, Celebrate Recovery Ministries begin an outreach in their jails and prisons. So we're doing some workshops here at the summit. But the big picture of that is we want you to be through your own step study first. So we want you to focus on your own recovery. And we want your local Celebrate Recovery to be graduating step studies. And then after people finish step studies, we would then encourage them, uh, how now are you going to do your 12 step? How are you going to be someone who gives back? And we encourage them in doing their ministry inside of a jail or prison. And uh, once someone says they would like to do jail or prison ministry, then we have about 80 state reps for CR Inside around the country. And we can connect people to their state reps and train them and, and just walk with them and partner with them to get their ministry started. And after that, the ministry belongs to them. It doesn't belong to us. We're just there to help them get going. Wow. And how much clean time is recommended? To One year of clean time for anybody becoming a leader in uh, Celebrate Recovery and especially in uh, prison ministry outreach. So usually by the time someone finishes their uh, step study, it's been about a one year or so. 
we're looking for them to uh, have a year um, of sobriety and a year and completion of their step study. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, that's it. Thank you so much, Sober Gang TV. You got it. All right, Sober Gang TV. Good talking with you all. Definitely. All right, CRCC is going inside to step on the big stage. I'm coming, I'm standing up, I'm standing up, I'm standing up. You ready to get on the big stage? You want to say something? Uh, yes, my name is Gary. I'm from California by way of California. Now I live in Georgia. I'm all in with California, but I'm all in with Celebrate Recovery Cultural Communities. Hey, hey, all right. You ready to get on stage? Yes, I am. I, we've done this before. I hope they got some air inside for us. Right. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, you ready to get on stage? Yes, sir. Sorry, I got food in my mouth. But, uh, yeah, we we'll go up here and um, show our faces, let people know that um, we're here. We're here to serve, not to be recognized or nothing like that, but just to, to serve the people. They're not with us, okay? Because any, any of the help that you need at your Celebrate Recovery to keep it running safe or to get started is going to be for an amazing team of volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. John Baker. John Baker said from the beginning, and I heard Johnny Baker say it again the other day, and it's true. The state representatives of, state, of Celebrate Recovery are the glue that holds Celebrate Recovery together. You know, I, I love this crowd because I can say anything and you're all like, Woo! They're still coming. Woo! I'm trying to get some of the cultural community. Look, Thank you. Hey, hey, state reps, I see you. Thank you. All right, all the state reps. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, how you doing, man? Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> God bless you. God bless the state reps right here. Hey, hey, this is what all the state reps look like. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. I see all the state reps. Oh, cultural communities, CRCC. That's right. Hey, state reps. I see y'all. Hey, hey, Florida. Uh-oh, Texas in the building. Hey, hey, California. What's up? We got Texas. I see y'all. State reps. We got the state reps. Hey, hey. Texas. I see y'all. We got the state reps. State reps. Thank you for your service, state reps. I see y'all. Hey, hey. State reps. What's up? <laughs> oh yeah, we got it. Was this worth it. State it didn't rip. last for long, but it was worth it. Right. <laughs> All right, we are here at the spiritual warfare class, and it is full, 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 full. Oh my goodness, chairs are gone. All right, spiritual warfare at Celebrate Recovery is serious, 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 serious. Uh oh, excuse me. Oh yeah. It's going all the way down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to bring my own chair in or sit on the floor. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, there's no chairs. Look at this. 
There is no seating. Oh yeah. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to go to a different class. Spiritual warfare is looking nuts. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, this is what I have to sign. Yes, yes, Sober Gang TV. I wanted to give you my hoodie. Okay. Sober Gang is my, uh, like my ministry idea. Got it. And uh, so, yeah, I got a large and an XL right here. Thanks, brother. Appreciate yeah, it. for sure. And then also, I wanted to ask you a question on camera sure. real quick. Okay. Did you know that there's no CR in Oakland, California? In Oakland, California? Yeah. I had no idea there's no CR in California. What, what's the best way to get one started? I'm here. Start one. Go find your state rep, California state rep. If you can't find them, go to Bob Newby. He's the regional director of the of the West, and let him know you want to get one started, and I'll help you get started. Okay. Yeah, man. Cool, man. Awesome. Thank you, that. man. Yeah, one. yeah for yeah. sure, cool. for sure. All right, man. Oh yeah. So these are yours. Thanks, brother. Yep. It's all good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Alright man, uh, Sober Gang TV here. Go ahead and tell us about the drum, man. Oh, oh see, oh, my name's Kevin. Um, the, the drum, the story of the drum, this is a hand drum. And, and my friend knew I was a believer in Jesus, so he made, the, made it for me. And he made a cross in the center that represents Christ. The wood on the drum represents the tree that God knew he was going to have to grow because he was going to have to sacrifice his son because of your sins and because of my sins. The animal skin covering over the drum represents the covering that God made for Adam and Eve back in the garden. He's been our covering and our provider ever since. The, the drum beat, the heartbeat, is the first instrument we ever heard. It was when we was in our mother's womb, and we used that to honor Creator. Okay, that's the um, oh, Yeah, we got a few other things. We got our, our medicine wheel that, that's in a circle with a cross in the center. It's not like a dream catcher, like a spider web, but, but it's got the four main colors. It's got red for all the red people, black for all the black people, yellow for all the yellow people, and white for all the white people. And, and what that means is everything's in a circle, so nobody's above each other. You know, the cross is in the center, and when we get closer to the cross, we get closer to each other. And you might just be one color out of here, or you might be a mixture. You might not even know, but it don't matter, because in this circle of life, we're all the human race. We're all related. We're all important. So it's important that we know about culture and who we are, but it's also important to know that we're all equal, we're all the same, nobody's above anybody else. And even though we got different cultures that do different things, it's like individually. You know, throughout Scripture, God chose the least qualified people to do the most amazing things. And we never feel qualified for what we're doing, but, but God has a plan and a purpose for every one of our lives. So we're all unique and separate in that way. We've got our own gifts and talents, but we're all still the same. We're all still a forever family. So, uh, what's, uh, what else you got? what's the turtle shell? The, the turtle shell, we're Cherokee and we use that for worship. That's a uh, um, turtle shell shaker. It's got the seven colors for the seven clans of the Cherokees. And we're not a big powwow drum people. We use that for worship. So, different people and different cultures use different things to worship God. Okay. And uh, lastly, can you say, um, just educate the people about the nature of Native American ministry? Like, Okay, um, Native ministry is a very hard ministry because of the history of what happened to the Native Americans. They come, they stole the land, they put their kids in boarding schools to kill the Indian and save the man. They uh, tried to assimilate them into their race. They said everything they was doing was wrong. Uh, and in reality, it's all about relationship with God. It's not about religion uh, and being like somebody else and forced like them. 
So it's a very hard ministry, but it's a very rewarding ministry. You know, Native people are very spiritual. They believe in the Creator and, and, and creation. And once they know who, who Jesus really is, then it changes everything. When we go to a reservation, we can only go by invite. You know, we never force ourselves on somebody's land. But when we come, we come in a good way. We, tobacco is one of our biggest things we use. It's not like the tobacco you smoke, but a ceremonial tobacco. And when we ask an elder for something, we give them tobacco. Or we pick a plant for medicine, we give it tobacco or a drink of water. So when we go to a reservation, when we give the, the elders and the tribal council tobacco, it shows that we're not so religious that we don't know protocol. So it opens up a door for us to, to come in and speak and share with them. Today I celebrate 28 years sobriety from a meth addiction and being homeless. I serve as a Celebrate Recovery Native Nations Regional Rep for the Western United States. I'm a full-time Native Nations missionary bringing recovery to Native Americans on and off the res. We've been to 16 states so far and um, it's just been amazing. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Uh, we do the Celebrate Recovery is is the Christ centered uh, recovery program, and we do them together, growing Christ to heal from our hurts, hurt habits, and hangups. で、現在、このカルチャルコミュニティの中で、えー、英語が喋れない方、例えば日本人の方にも、えー、ステップスタディ、えー、そしてズームミーティングなども提供しています。えー、ご興味のある方は、えー、ハッシュタグをつけておきますので、私たちに連絡してください。みんなで回復しましょう。So, our Japanese、uh, step study and recovery group、uh, has joined cultural communities, and、uh, we also meet as a men's group, so please join us if you're interested. This guy served. We're doing a YouTube thing. Do you want to be in it, Matthew? No, he d o n t want to be in it. That's okay. Those are for you and your wife. They're gifts for helping out. And thank you very much.、Um, be careful. One of the handles is breaking. But just wanted to give that to you guys and thank you. Wonderful. I appreciate and, it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, brother. We'll be up here in a little while. Cool. I got to help out down the refinery. Awesome. It's good to have you. So, what we have here, what Welcome Home is, is it's an open share group for veterans. So, veterans get together and they do like the open share group, like any of our small groups that we do. And、uh, we're just able to share, you know, what we've gone through and kind of the, what, what hurts, habits, and hangups are going on now.、Um, but we also have it for not only、um, veterans, but spouses of veterans or children over the 18. That have parents, you know, that were veterans and want to try to unpack and understand some of those things. So we ask people to come out and see us. We give them these wristbands, you know, and we help, help them set up their welcome home groups and、uh, just get them going. It's pretty simple, not a lot to it. It's just another open share group that we offer. There's a lot of them. There, one of the things is it's a very much、uh, in the military, there's a culture of drinking. You know, that's one of the gateways. So, what we'll do is we'll go out and it's like a camaraderie thing, right? So, we go out and drink, and then it's like becomes a competition. Can I out drink this guy? Can they out drink me? And so you, you get this addictive behavior of drinking and then thinking you have to be social to do that. The other issue we have is we do have guys that come back and they get, they get injured or whatever, even, if, even in non combatant situations, they can get injured and you know, working on shipboard, you know, working out in the field, falling off a truck or whatever, they'll get hurt. They'll go get some treatment. A lot of times they get drugs. They get hooked and addicted to these drugs. And when the doctor says, I can't give you this anymore, that's when they hit the streets. And that's why one of the big epidemics for a lot of veterans is the opiates. They get addicted to them and they go start using them on the street, fentanyl, you know, they'll start getting heroin, any of those kind of drugs that are out there. 
they'll start buying them on the street where you don't know what you're getting. And a lot of the drugs nowadays are laced with fentanyl. So they may be thinking they're buying an oxy, but they're getting an oxy with a little bit of uh, fentanyl in it too. And that's what is killing them. So we try to educate them on those too. Like we have, uh, we give out Narcan. You know, we see people on the street that look like they're, you know, having a problem. We'll, we'll give them Narcan. We'll give it to people, you know, just some of the homeless we do see on the street. We try to educate them and say, hey, you know, this is something you need. But that's that's probably the main ones that I see where people get. Okay, what's your uh, uh, closing message and then if any message to the maybe unhoused veterans out there in this country? So unhoused veterans, I just say there's resources there. Look for them. Try to find people that can help. Churches are a big avenue. Um, I belong to a VFW post as well. So we try to house veterans and we work through many organizations. There's help out there. Just got to ask for it, reach out. If you see a veteran, another veteran struggling, talk to them. A lot of it is all we just need is someone to talk to, someone to understand. That's why we created this group. John Baker started this group up and it's just a heart for veterans. John Baker was a veteran as well. So these are some of the things that he had a passion for. But like I said, just reach out. You know, we're all over the country now, so look look for Celebrate Recovery, look for the Welcome Home. You know, veterans, home, any homeless person, you know, come out and see what we got, see what we can help you, and tie you to the different services in your community. But yeah. All right, Tony Campbell. Yep. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. You have a... We are rolling Sober Gang TV here, and um, go ahead and tell us who you are and what where, where we're at. Okay, hi everyone. I'm uh, Jamie. Um, I am at Saddleback Church for the Celebrate Recovery Summit. And um, I am in leadership for Celebrate Recovery Cultural Communities. I am also the uh, regional mental health champion. Okay, and you just had the, what's that called, the luncheon, the mental health luncheon? Yes. How did that go, and what were some of the talking points for that luncheon? It went fantastic. It was really good. Um, so talking points were um, our, us expressing our reasons why we are mental health champions and um, what drew us to this part of the ministry. And then also people just had a really great questions about how to become a mental health champion and what to do if someone is struggling at their local CR and what are some of the procedures and things of that nature. Okay, so two questions. What did you have to say for your why? And then also, what is a mental health champion? I can ask that. Okay. Um, uh, my reason why is because I have personally struggled with uh, depression and anxiety. Um, I started uh, coming to Celebrate Recovery in 2015. Um, help um, to strengthen my uh, relationship with Jesus Christ and then also to work on my own personal hurt habits and hangups. And so for me that looked like um, overcoming trauma and overcoming sexual abuse and things of that nature and so getting the tools so CR provides these tools and that you are able to use your tools to go along with whatever your journey is and so then that helps you to be able to get some sobriety under your belt and to be able to walk in victory through Christ Jesus but I gotta go love you guys right. thank you so much you're welcome Thank you.
Is there anything more precious than doing that as a married couple? Honestly. All right, from Oakland, California, this is my mate, David. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. So, if there's any confusion about CR, it's the real deal, Holy Spirit filled way to bring Jesus Christ into the life of those with hurts, habits, and hang ups, addictions, behaviors, misbehaviors, and, um, a mental health resource, um, it's diverse, it's inclusive, it, uh, there's really all there is to say, it's, I don't need to sell it too, too far, but I've seen the world of evangelizing, hey, hey, and discipling without this, and it just seems like there's a, a missing link without a willingness to do this or a reference like if someone comes to you with a problem or an addiction or a behavior uh, that you don't know how to handle and you just refer them to a counselor, I believe you're skipping a step, you know, before you refer somebody just to a counselor, you should talk to them about Christian recovery that's for mental health uh, and for all addictions and trauma-induced behaviors. And I mean, the list is right here, here it goes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put this on camera. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so you are here from Kenya? Yes, I am. My name is Wendy and I'm in recovery from many things, alcohol, codependency, fear and anxiety. But yes, I'm from Kenya. I'm a state rep or a regional rep and I'm here to just represent and enjoy the summer. So tell me about CR in Kenya. So you go to a CR meeting in Kenya? Yes, we actually have our meetings every Friday evening at 6.30. Uh, so we started it two years ago. We have some two other churches that are starting, we're launching them. And we have 66 churches in Nairobi that want to start. So there's a lot of good things happening in Kenya. Really? And then yes. what's the primary language? Uh, the primary language, so Ken, um, English is the official language, but Swahili is the national language. And then there are 42 tribes in Kenya. Really? There yeah. aren't any, you guys don't speak Swahili in there yet, do you? We do, that's what, Swahili is the national language, so we have English and then Swahili and then our local tribes. Really? What? Yeah. Okay, can I ask you to say something in Swahili? Yes. About just CR, just tell people, Kenyan people, to check that CR is in Kenya. Hello, hello, naitwa Wendy. CR in Akwanga, Kenya, iko Nairobi, tunajaribu kuipeleka places mingi. Uh, but yeah, Neza Takasana Mkujen, I'm doing CR. Napenda sana nyote. All right, thank you, thank you. Cool. All right, Sober Gang TV. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Man, I am in a conundrum. So, today, I am on my way to the CR conference, okay? And um, I don't have any money airbnb took my my money and some lady named rose in santa Ana give her a negative review she denied my stay so they don't give your money back for like five business days so they left me stranded thankfully this dude named siraj gave me a, a, a coupon online but basically, I have to sell... I have five Sober Gang sweaters with me. And um, I'm going to try to relax a little bit when I get to the airport. I'm going to do a little writing. I'm going to charge my camera. But I'm about to sell some hoodies on the streets, y'all. 
dude, I'm scared. I'm scared of I'm gonna get stuck. Uh, I got fifty dollars to Uber to one destination, you know. So I'm really trying to think about what they're about to do right now. I'm about to uh, sit down probably and, and just charge everything up and relax for a little bit in the ho- uh, uh, airport. And then I'm gonna try to find a good place to sell sweaters, man. I'm gonna sit outside of like a Starbucks or something. And I'm just going to try to find anybody sober, man. Anybody sober that is willing to buy a sober gang hoodie. So hopefully the gang proves that in every city, state, and town, a sober gang member can be found. (laughs) That's a Mac Dre inspired line. Okay. Uh, Let's get it. Romans 5, 8 states, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Which means before we chose God, God chose us. Before we achieved even one thing, he already loved us. While we were running away from this church is like a whole city. Alright, let's get it. I'm gonna let y'all know what it's looking like.